Hey guys, welcome to the show. This is Gavin. I hope you're doing good out there. If this is the first time joining us. Welcome to the show. Um, something I always like to throw out there for the for the new listeners. If you've glanced over the feed, deciding whether you want to dive into this podcast or not. One, it's all Cure Talk. So if you're down here to, to hear some Cure Talk, you're going to enjoy it. Um, but we do like to change it up from episode to episode and, uh, you know, the, the varying approach to these episodes. Sometimes we do like to hash out a lot of Cure history and great moments that have happened in the Cure's timeline and even speculate and theories on things that have happened and might happen in the future. Sometimes we just uh, talk about what we're drinking while we're listening to the Cure. Uh, but one thing that has been fairly consistent from the start of this is we love to do the occasional origin tales episode where we talk with somebody or get you just to talk about it yourself of how this all started what got you into the cure who got you into the cure and uh, what was the initial attraction and all kinds of wonderful things like that and where the journey has taken you in um in your cureness through the years that you've been a fan so um this is one of those episodes and and i'm one that i'm really excited about because um usually it it could be a friend or somebody that we've just been talking to on social media through the podcast or through one of the facebook pages or something like that or on an instagram but this one in particular is special because it's a old dear friend of my brother and i it goes way back to the start of my cure love um very much parallels with jessica's story too and not only the cure we all went to so many shows together as we'll talk about in this episode and just all those early days of everything from from the cure to different 90s bands through all the way to the 2000s to so many great rock shows and just weird shows and and life-changing shows and uh, i really wish we could could just talk about all those but we tried to keep it cure centered and uh, i just it was a real treat talking to her and catching up with jessica out in new mexico so i really want to just dive into it but i also want to throw it out there to you guys to think about maybe your origin tales i'd like to do more of these again and keep them more regular in the rotation so uh, without further ado, I want to share this conversation I had with our old friend Jessica, and I hope you enjoy it, and I hope it gets you thinking about how it all started too, because that's part of the fun here with Cure Talk on the Holy Hour podcast. So get cozy as we welcome our old friend Jessica to the show. Hello and welcome to the Holy Hour podcast, the bi-weekly all-cure podcast. I'm Gavin, and I have a very special episode for you guys today. I'm here with Jessica, and uh, a longtime friend from way back, way back at the beginning of all this cure madness. So, uh, welcome Jess, how's it going out there? Good, thanks Gavin, I'm super excited to be here. This is, um, you know, pretty awesome and touching on one of my favorite bands um of all time so uh it's great yeah it's, uh, it's uh it's like um just kind of crazy with the idea of starting this podcast in the beginning i had like you know oh i know i could talk about the 13 albums at least and i know i got about like 10 friends that like you know, have been loving the cure as long as I have, if not longer and somewhere around the start, you know? So I was like, I had this short list. I was like, but what's going to happen when I run out? You know, this is only be like a 20 episode thing. <laughs> and here I am now like 170 episodes in or something. And, uh, <laughs> quickly learned the cure talk. There's no shortage of cure talk out there in the world, but, um, but yeah, you were on that initial list for sure. I was like, there's only like, you know, 10 people I know that, you know, I trust their <laughs> cure opinions as much. And uh, so it definitely <laughs> was like, it's time to reach out. We got this modern technology called Zoom that people can use <laughs> where you don't have to be in the same room or same state even. So uh, yeah, thanks for joining me long distance on this morning. <laughs> thank you i'm super thank you for inviting me um i'm i'm in new mexico friends so okay yeah i, I didn't want to so disclose for you i was like hey, <laughs> yes yes out there in new mexico and um yeah, yeah and, and your origin story is really cool because we have so much overlap from the early days when i was starting to think about it i was like well there's really not 
many people out there that I know that go back as far as, as our, you know, crossover cure love. And then it's still not the very beginning. So that's why I'm fascinated to talk with you. I'm like, oh yeah, but she was like, you know, definitely into them before we even met. So I was like, it's, it's very early, but at the same time, not the actual start. So uh, I don't know. I was very curious. Um, and I hate to start stories out with my story but I thought it might be fun to like uh, say where I was at when I first heard of you as a person yeah, and yeah. <laughs> and the cure just a quick like see where the train tracks cross over there but um so and definitely let me know because it's funny with these things too is even if as we get into cure talk of like what people remember and how stories are like no nah, I don't I don't remember that or that's totally wrong you know like when you're looking at an old photo album or something it's like that was like a completely different year <laughs> so, so definitely call me out if I'm not remembering correctly. But um, my memory goes back to I was in seventh grade. Um, so I was about a year and a half maybe into liking The Cure at that point. Jeff Butler had gotten me into him. And, uh, and, uh, so I was going into like sec seventh grade. By that point, it was like 89, 90 and disintegration had been out. I loved it. And it was winding down, I guess, as far as the new album. And in that year, I was in, I think that was right when we started changing classes as a kid in middle school. Yeah. And, and uh, so I didn't have all the classes with your brother, um, but he was in, I think it was a history class in seventh grade. And I distinctly remember this part where it was pretty early in the year, I think he came up to me right as we were leaving class and I had like, you know, cure written all over my notebooks and everything, you know, probably wearing the shirt sewn on my jacket or whatever the hell I was covered in cure stuff. But, um, he was all like, Hey man, the cure. And I was like, yeah, yeah you know, and I was like, you know, cause it was like crazy back in those days when you met like somebody that's heard of the cure. <laughs> but, uh, so he like checked me down. He was like, yeah, yeah. My sister's got like all the posters up in her room and stuff. And, and he's like, yeah, they're cool. And I was like, yeah, also cool. And it just kind of was like passing kind of thing like that. And, uh, and I think shortly after that, I don't know if it was that meeting, we made the connection that you're also the girl that had been hanging out with my brother in, in, around that time. So I was just like, oh, it's the same Jessica. That's awesome. <laughs> so, so, yeah, he had just transferred from military school into public school. And if I remember correctly, met you in a drama class there, maybe. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 And in Mr. Franklin's drama class. <laughs> awesome. So yeah, lots of care and it's always flying around in the drama department. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so yeah, that was pretty cool. You know, of course, shortly after that, you know, we'd cross paths, hang it out and stuff. But um, but yeah, it was pretty cool that like the first mention was like my sister Jessica cure fan bam 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 <laughs> it's just like and knows your brother and I was like oh my god what so uh so yeah where did the cure begin for you then if uh because if you're already somewhat established by that point <laughs> I think you know a, I, probably a lot of it was um connected to my also obsession with skaters and skateboarding culture. Yeah. I know that sounds silly, yeah. but um, <laughs> I obviously <laughs> was into the skater crowd. And my boyfriend at the time was a freestyler, though. He he was on um, a bike, I remember. And, okay. um, <clears throat> and he was really into U2. He was obsessed with U2. Hmm. You know, all my neighbors, a lot of my neighbors in my neighborhood were skaters. And... Was that around the time when Gleaming the Cube came out or was that? Yeah, later? it must have been. Funny is like all that crew is probably the same people without even really knowing it in a sense, you know, like through high school, they were all the older guys and stuff that I never really got to hang out with, but was kind of connected to. <laughs> so. Absolutely. Yeah. No, it was like, it. it's so funny. And like, you know, and they were uh, most, a lot of the skaters that I hung out with were really into hardcore music, but I, you know, I was more into the cure and the Smiths and, you know, like you think about Ferris Bueller's day off, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. And like, there's just so many influences back then, like when they're going through the art museum and listening, you know, it's just like, it was so powerful and it connected to, I don't know, my feelings being an artist, I guess I would say as an artist back then and a poet. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I love to write poetry and I was huge into the transcendentalists and Walt Whitman, um, but weird crossover there for me, <laughs> but like the cure, you know, their music, um, 
really helped me sometimes when I was um, going through stuff as a young teen and yeah. <laughs> like depressed or not having, you know, um, being able to have that little relationship that you want when it's just so silly now, but it just makes me laugh. Nah, it makes total sense. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's so it's so funny. It's like, I don't know, but that music was really important for me in my process. I would say as an artist and, you know, how they presented their music. Um, you know, I, I, I was a ballet dancer and I used to listen to certain kinds of classical music. And particularly there was, um, there were lots of pieces by Tchaikovsky that always like threw me into a loop for, for its, um, like how, how many layers there, there were captured in Tchaikovsky's music as an example. And mm -hmm. I would just be so astounded by wow, there's so much here um, and so many layers. And to me, The Cure, they were just like that. Like there were so many layers to their to their music and the, the, the orchestration that they put together, particularly with the, the two guitars and, um, yeah. and, and how they would use different pedals that created these sounds that I just was drawn to and I loved, you know, so much more. Like, like you knew when he hit that pedal and you could hear it coming, coming like, as like a prompt and it's almost like i mean i i never saw them live back then it was obviously later mm -hmm. but when you think about when you're seeing the cure live like that's part of what you're experiencing is how how many how how much there is to their music and how they can play with that and share it with you in different ways yeah for sure yeah it's so much more than like you know guitar solo enters here you know like you know, all the standard rock format kind of thing it, it is just kind of mind-blowing as a kid in particular too because it is like you're saying just those those layers are, are crucial and it's not particularly like solos even you know it's just like these few little keyboard yeah. parts will drift in and the guitar part drifts in and kind of takes over for a little bit and then they're all on top of each other by the end and it's just like yeah that's <laughs> It's such the the love there, and and so few bands can pull that off, especially in this way, you know. So. I completely agree. Absolutely, it was just it's just such special special music and there's an, an intelligence about the cure to me too yeah. you know and like like um i don't know you just feel that and I, for me i did anyway it's 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 heart but it's also intelligence and it drew in people that were just wicked smart mm -hmm. like i know that may sound really goofy but i feel like that culture um there was a culture there's yeah. a pure culture right like it's a whole culture that was tied to i mean when you have Susie and the banshees and the cure doing a song together you know like yeah. i mean gosh i can't i can't it gets you so excited because yeah. it just feels you just feel so connected to it and, and... i guess because the fact that it wasn't all over the place too did make it feel like your own kind of special club in a sense too you know yeah. to, as silly as all that kind of sounds but it's crucial and like high school and like middle school, even like when I was into where you, you find similar people and it wasn't, you know, that's where you kind of hit those conflicts later as they start getting more popular and stuff, but it is kind of like your secret, like <laughs> handshake kind of thing, you know, where you see another person with a cure shirt and you kind of know that it isn't, you know, that kind of meathead Def Leppard, you know, <laughs> kind of like take that everybody had, that, you know, and everybody was walking around in a Guns N' Roses t-shirt at that point. So it was like, yeah, there'd be cool people that still liked them or whatever, but it was pretty much like guaranteed that at least you would connect on some level if you found those one or two people that were wearing Cure and Smith's and New Order shirts or something, you know, so it's a... I, I feel like too like there's that still exists like yeah. like when you see a film like like when, the Marie Antoinette film right? right and when Sofia Coppola like ends that film like that scene where they're they're leaving to basically go be executed and yeah. I mean, not that it, <laughs> but it was this beautiful scene and she plays you know the cure and you're like oh my god and all of a sudden you're like in the opening of a concert yeah, you know and they're playing sure. like plane song or something and because it is in a sense too like yeah she could have put any new band in there oh, you totally. know and it was like any band that could have captured that feeling probably you know but it's like that nod 
to something that she clearly probably loves and like also captures that emotion perfectly so it's like an older song you're like whoa like all right i'm cool with her that's awesome (laughs) it just makes you like like, okay she's in my club yeah exactly (laughs) (laughs) yeah that's great (laughs) so yeah um so you were saying around those time with those other bands, I was always curious of like where the cure necessarily fit in. Cause a lot of people like get into the cure and then the kind of doors open up to like the Pesh mode and the new orders and stuff like of, yes. you know, whatever people chooses their two and threes of whatever, you know, but, um, so did you kind of, did the cure open up those more? Do you feel like you kind of like those oh. bands before the cure even? So. No, absolutely. Absolutely. It did. Um, because especially when you think about New Order, you know what I yeah. mean? And how they, they were so parallel. Um, but then that opened you to like Joy Division, yeah. you know what I mean? And like, and then you're like going in and out with all of these different bands tied to it. Um, um, but I would definitely agree with that, that it was that The Cure is kind of a gateway yeah. to even, even more um, just so creative and I guess you would have to say uh, British music, yeah. right? Like, I mean, how that eventually sucked us into like when NME.com was like new, yeah. you know what I mean? And like, I mean, I know that's a lot later, but um, I don't Just know. And then you had there. what at the time that was like the BM, was it BMG? And yeah, like, Columbia House. This, yeah. House, I know, I know the Connor household had an addiction, uh, but like yeah. <laughs> that was like how you connected with like all of those new, all of those bands and that new music at the uh, time, right? Somehow we didn't it felt have, like, like less a commitment, music. you know, you were like, yeah. I'll just take a gamble on this one. I've seen it. And it's funny you mentioned the skater <laughs> stuff, you know, cause that was definitely what we were all knee deep in, especially with the yeah. music overlap. And so much of it was like, it was weird because it is more like hardcore stuff. So it was all the punk stuff and the misfits right. and everything I got into initially. But then somehow in the back of like Thrasher magazine and stuff, there'd still be like Smiths and Care t-shirt ads and stuff <laughs> and, and the cramps and stuff. All those ones that just had like the cool oh, yeah. visuals of everything, you know, and so you would just kind of be like, all right, well, they're kind of all in the same world, at least like the same universe. And uh so, yeah, it was kind of neat where you would be able to branch out and you'd be like, well, what's with this Joy Division band? You know, they're all over everything that The Cure is all over, or, or, you know. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, it's, it's pretty and it cool. is kind of interesting how it, it, it's all, it was also like a gateway to British culture. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I mean, like what Sid and Nancy was like this big thing, right? right. Like that story. Um, <clears throat> but at the same time, like, you know, I mean, I was thinking about this as we were getting ready for this podcast, but it was like, who listens to Cure Music and tries to sing it with a British accent? You yeah. know what I mean? Like, <laughs> who does, like, I do that. Yeah. I know, I know, like, that has to, like, how funny that is, you know, and how we became on so, such Anglophiles, yeah. you know what I mean? I through, spelled through gray music. wrong for years because I was so <laughs> used to all the gray and cure stuff. I was like, well, clearly they spell it that way. Why would I, why am I getting this wrong? But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, for sure. It was just a, a cool other world for sure. <laughs> Do you remember, I mean, it's always hard to pinpoint the exact moment of like where they popped in or like a specific song or anything that was like or was it kind of just a slow creep in through like mixes and stuff or I you know I think probably um you know one of the songs that I just I don't know why I I remember this one more maybe in the early years it was kind of like the the pictures of you you know what I mean like that was like such a popular like song um and I don't know, maybe like a pop poppy like gateway into it. Cause they had that remix that they had that remix album too. Yeah. Mixed and up. It became really popular. Yeah. And, um, but I, I guess that's probably, I, you know, I, that's the only like real pinpoint I have for myself until like, you know, later where God, there was just like when you got into all the live albums and like, I yeah. remember watching in orange with you guys, like yeah. thinking about that. And it was a lot of concert stuff that we would connect to. Yeah. They started cranking them out around that point too. Like just recordings. And I guess 
bootlegs and stuff started to circulate in those early post disintegration era bootlegs you could buy at the record store and stuff like the overpriced super crappy yeah. quality and stuff but uh but yeah it's it's crazy oh, yeah like tower records yeah like, tower records in springfield yeah that? they would always have the best import singles yes. and stuff. yeah especially once it got into like the brit pop stuff more they were like the only place you could buy like the the four versions of the same song single and <laughs> it's just it's like 40 oh, remember that there was like where wasn't it like where robert smith was like just reading the ingredients of a cake recipe yeah, yeah. Like, so what and, that was like like just shouting <laughs> them like a yeah, punk yeah. song like like i'll never forget that like just that kind of stuff was so cool <laughs> <laughs> totally yeah it's those little things that are like this dude is definitely out there in all the right ways you know i was like <laughs> Which, which I guess taps on the the questions I like to ask of people of initial appeal too. Uh, it's funny how many people the first exposure they have to them is seeing like MTV or like the Just Like Heaven video or something. Right. Do you recall Absolutely. if you heard them before seeing them, or did you see them before hearing them? I definitely heard them before seeing them. Yeah. I think I, you know, we didn't really, I didn't really get into. I just, I remember staying up late, right? Like on what night was it where they had like that special show on MTV? Uh, 120 like, Minutes. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. I feel like such a jerk. <laughs> no, 120 Minutes sounds like good. It's crucial to all of us. We're all, it comes up very regularly. Every time. You either set the VCR or you just stayed up all night and you just had a rough Monday. But yeah, it was like you record those three or four really awesome videos and just like have to <laughs> suffer through all the rest. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Stupid crap. It's like, but yeah. I think, yeah, like there, there started that, that culture started to creep in. Right. Yeah. I guess through that. And I remember, you know, but, but honestly, I, I probably saw them more because of all the cool uh, VHS videos that you and, and O would, yeah. would end up like, grabbing somehow hmm. um, yeah i was trying to even think of that for myself or it went back before i officially even liked them at jeff butler's house i think we watched in orange like a bunch of times before i'd even yes. declared myself a fan and i even started to wonder it was like i wonder if it was an easier segue because he was a little bit more tamed down on the appearance and stuff and in orange with the shorter hair and stuff like nice. you know like people that just like lullaby was the first time you saw it or something you know you'd be like whoa this dude's like fucking <laughs> he's got it all going in every direction but uh it might be a little drastic but uh but yeah it's it's interesting on the flip side so many people saw like the just like heaven video and that you know he just looks so cool they all do in that video and stuff where you're just like whatever i don't even care about the song they just look so cool and the imagery is just so strong with them that i always wonder what reeled the person in more but, but yeah i think it was music for me too first before i can't even like think about like it's almost like i can't even remember ever thinking like whoa that guy's weird yeah now, like, like to me <laughs> yeah, it was just yeah. like this is the this is the way we need to be <laughs> yeah i mean i guess it was like late 80s so, i mean it was everybody was like all over the place as far as you know we had already <laughs> seen so much weird shit from like 80s bands <laughs> i still love the 80s when you see stuff it's like they were still more futuristic then than it is now you know it's like yeah. 2021 yeah. and like people are still look like the damn robot just came off the spaceship in the 80s and it was like we sh we're still not there yet but uh, that's part of that magical time i guess but yeah i don't even really remember being like freaked out that he looked like that or you know i think once i got on the school bus and i realized all the rednecks were freaked out by it and i was like i might get beat up for wearing this t-shirt <laughs> I think I think they tried to beat up Owen on the school yeah, bus. Yeah, they were after <laughs> all of us, man. The, the skater, if you were just a skater, that was terrible. And then if you're a skater wearing a t-shirt of a grown man in lipstick, then you're pretty much uh, doomed. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> What's weird is like the girl perspective, Gav, is that mm. like, I just was like, he's hot. Yeah. <laughs> he's so I've heard that from so many people. I was just like, this is it. This is like the definition of hot man right here. It's, it's like, shit, all right. That's so funny. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, and the flip side of all the, the rednecks on the bus that wanted to beat us up. The irony is that they're all wearing like Motley Crue shirts with the <laughs> guys got hair bands, even bigger and hair and, and better eyeliner. lipstick. Yeah, I was like, it's like Robert Smith looks tame compared to half the dudes in that band. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> If you even think about Kiss, I mean, come on. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess with the idea of uh, the early days too, and and we always talk about how, you know, I guess coming in around, would you say safe to say around disintegration then was when you officially would declare yourself a fan? Was it? You know, I'm going to, right. I'm going to say with disintegration. Yeah. I mean, obviously, and there were like, um, like you, I kind of, for me, like I went through different time frames in my life where I got more into that album and, and more. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, that's like, right. yeah, like, especially in college, I think I just like, that album is unbelievable. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, you just can't, gosh, some of those songs, like it's hard to even, and I think too, and I mean, I think anybody could say this, but when you see The Cure live, like that gets you even more into certain albums and songs oh, yeah. like because you hear it in a different way and you're like whoa and then you like you want to listen to that song again and again and like you you have different feelings about it because it's more it's more dimensional than than what you have just going on in your head before you you see them live and perform a certain song yeah i mean just the song does you know just disintegration unto itself like God, that song live is unbelievable, mm -hmm. you know? Gosh. Yeah, that song's a weird one. It's like since doing the podcast, you know, I always loved it. And just as a part of the album and stuff, but it's, you know, I've said it a billion times on here. It's just weird, like every year, especially maybe with just everything's falling apart in the world. It becomes <laughs> more right. and more relevant. You know, I just feel like every year that song, just like I love it, you know, where it's become probably one of my favorites on the album for sure. I don't know if it'll ever top pitches of you all together but at the same time it's like it's such a good song and just really captures the you know the madness the breaking down of you know and like you're saying live though it just takes it up 500 degrees you know or it's just like oh man and it has those layers like you're talking about just like such a simple little part you know taught henson that little da -da, da -da, da -da, on, yeah. on piano and it just like just such a simple little like tumble down the keys there you know it's just it's perfect I completely agree Going to the, the live angles, then I guess that's probably where, where some of the fun or overlap in our cure love in early days is just that you're, you know, there when they pretty much all those early first shows. I think um, I was trying to do the list there, mental memory wish then i'm assuming that was the first time you saw the cure too right 92 when we all went yeah that's we went we what well, didn't we that was the craziest week because we saw we saw harry connick jr sorry yeah. fans if you're like what <laughs> there goes all my we cred <laughs> <laughs> my god sorry cred. <laughs> nah, nah. i'll stand so by we it saw, yeah. <laughs> we saw him at wolf trap and then it was like one day later or a day yeah, we went to see the cure yeah. and th those were like the two first biggest concerts like i'd and ever gone to yeah. it was unbelievable yeah for sure we, yeah just i remember that one was just a mess too for like the scramble to get tickets and stuff so it was like you owen myself and donald in one section then we had our friends like brandon and bill like up in the <laughs> different section because we called back later and got two more tickets and then you know you had like wow. friends from school and all little scattered pockets all over the stadium there but yeah that was just such like a, a magical moment there is that I still always just put as the best night of my life up and arguably at wedding day and childbirth you know it's hard to 
He's... Like, do you remember? I remember when you walk in, you know, like when you're getting ready to walk into the the, the stadium uh-huh. and and like you start like, wow, you're you're seeing everybody dressed up yeah. and like, oh, yeah. like this is real. You know what I mean? Like, I I remember that feeling like, holy goodness gracious. Yeah. <laughs> like, I want to curse on and say, holy shit, <laughs> yeah, I can't believe this is like happening. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like a whole and, stadium like, of other people. I thought there was only eight yeah. of us, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's got the hair, yeah. the clothes, and you're just like, wow. Like, oh, must this be in the wrong incredible. place. And like, nope, that dude's definitely not in the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, just that walking. I mean, I hadn't really even been to you know, any stadium like that, even let exactly. alone. I was just like, Oh my God. I was like, if a 15 year old could have a heart attack, I was probably <laughs> on my way, you know, just like <laughs> pump full of so much anxiety and like excitement. I was just like, Oh my God. But yeah, that's, <laughs> It's kind of like on the movie The Christmas Story, right? Where he's waiting to go see Santa, and the kid's trying to talk to him. He's like, "Stop talking to me! I need to concentrate. I need to get ready to see Santa." And like, that's Gavin getting ready to go into the the stadium to see the Cure. Totally. Yeah, I mean, a huge part of that still remains. Every Cure show I've seen since, where it's just like I get there, and I'm just like, oh, like to the point when I'm jotting them all down. I'm like, I don't even know who was with me at that one. I was just so like freaked out, like staring at the stage, wondering what the first song was gonna be and, but um yeah definitely didn't disappoint though that, that was amazing and just so cool that we got to see them with that lineup you know like oh yeah not, not knowing that that was gonna be the last you know of that lineup so like like i also you know i think and you probably talked about this a million times but like one of my biggest memories too always was like leaving and listening to hfs concert echo mm-hmm. you know where they were playing all the songs from the show yeah, i actually forgot um, about that yeah we haven't brought that up much but yeah so they would just play like what the studio versions but in the order right or yes was it? Yeah. in the order of what they played in the show and that was like that, that so was cool. amazing because you're sitting in traffic and yeah. <laughs> you can't get out of the parking <laughs> lot and you're like screw it you know everyone's got the echo on yeah. and you know it was just it just it kept it going yeah like, i totally forget about forget. that that's awesome <laughs> Yeah, and I think that's what got me on. I mean, he definitely did it for Cure shows, but for a long stretch, like every show we'd go to, I'd like jot down the songs, like so I wouldn't yes. forget the set list, you know. And like as soon as you know, like a Cure ones that are easier to stick in my head, you know. But um, of course, you, with the internet, you don't have to do any of that now. But, <laughs> so, <laughs> but I remember that. I remember yeah. you doing that. I remember it's a big deal. Yeah, I was like, hold on, I can't talk to anyone for 15 minutes till I remember every song that they played. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so that was great. So we we had seen, um, let's see, the so it was Wish in '92 and the Wild Mood Swings, which I definitely want to ask you about that one because that was a fun pre-story for that one too in 96 and then i don't think we were all together but we were at the same stadium for the nutcracker thing in 97 it was like a christmas show with like sugar ray and shit and all these and the verb oh and all this oh my gosh you're yeah. right so we had to suffer through some some pretty, pretty grim <laughs> bands before i need to look that up to see just how bad i remember just like sugar ray jumping down he was like running past everyone's like high five and it was like my arms are crossed i'm like just go away <laughs> <laughs> clearly here for the cure it's like no one wants to fly right now man we're trying and um but yeah it's like that one and, <laughs> and then we saw i'm just thinking do you remember the 9 30 club they had Susie and the banshees and they had like nwa opening for her or something? Yeah, what like... the heck is that and so like people like were like it was just like two camps of people yeah. that have nothing to do other now they'd get all these points for being so diverse and stuff you know? I, I know. Just like, everyone's just like what <laughs> pretty cool yeah that light up even it's just like wow okay i remember the verb was all pissed off because they weren't headlining so they just like didn't play like their one single and like, just like let his guitar feed back for like 20 minutes straight i was like thanks guys man <laughs> And then, uh, yeah, so Blood Flowers in 2000 um, at Merriweather. I believe you're with us there on that one, and like the to the Merriweather. left in the back section on that. 
But then our final one, I think we were at the same crowd, was that the disaster HF Festival thing with, again, yes! the, the thing in, uh, where it was like Offspring was playing right beforehand. So it was oh like, my God, I'll never forget geez, that. Yeah. That thing was a mess. And we were just like waiting outside, like tailgating for like hours, you know, because all the bands sucked. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I remember that day well. I think Bill wanted to punch me in the face. Yeah, everybody, we're all just <laughs> fighting with each other by the end. And stuff. <laughs> we should have taken our rage out in the in the thing there. We could have just been in the mosh pit the whole time, I think. But, uh, so, <laughs> but yeah, I remember it getting was like... so hot and humid. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, it must, I have to re look up the date. But yeah, it felt like it was like August or something. You know, or everyone was, was just horrible. so hot. And it's like... And then whenever I go in that, sta well, that's an old stadium, but I think about what I can't, there was an HF festival where Owen got like sick and like, he had to go to like the medic, the medic room. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, that was just one of the regular HF festivals probably, but it was, I think Blondie and I can't remember who else played at that one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, those things are blah, just blah, blah. like, oh, I still like, <laughs> and then as you get older, you realize how much festivals are ridiculous. Every <laughs> festival is pretty much like that, but it's just like yeah still like enough where i was like i gotta be up front in the offspring <laughs> watching the offspring <laughs> just to see the care i mean it was worth it in the end i was still close enough where i was like the closest you know i guess i Do you topped it uh -huh. like as we're talking about like shows there was there was one show and i'll, I'll just never forget it when like I like Robert Smith was like he pulled out his cell phone and and said say hello to Mary and his wife and like everyone just went like crazy and he was like he was like laying on his back like crawling across the stage yeah, and like what was that it was was I, that the 96 one maybe I remember he definitely I think it was. yeah like for wild mood swings it was like he was definitely like just cutting loose I think like about the encore that one's where they did like the why can't I be you? Love cats mash up yes, and stuff. And I was, uh, that was kind of an exceptionally cool set list from that tour where it they was. really did just play a lot of old ones and weird ones. And he was just all like over the place where he jumped down in the crowd. <laughs> it was like, oh, wow. Yeah, he went crazy. Yeah, like it was, it was so much fun. <laughs> so, yeah, it was definitely a weird era for the cure as we're revisiting all the wild mood swing stuff. It's like a 25th anniversary this year. So it's hard to. Hard to imagine that was 25 years ago, but um, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Along those I lines, the uh, the pre one was a fun story where I remember we went over to get the tickets for that. Do you that's remember? That's what I was gonna start yeah. talking about. We stayed <laughs> up like all night yeah. in like Glenn's dorm room at George Mason University. Totally, yeah, it was great. We um, yeah, because it was like the idea there was a Ticketmaster outlet. You know, they're gonna yes. be playing there. I was like, well, we'll just instead of just sitting on the curb at you know two thirty in the morning through whenever they open, let's just hang out. Um, friend Glenn there had the the dorm that was on campus right near there, so yeah. we just hung out. You know, as it creeps creeps up to eleven to twelve, I was like, let's just stay up all night. Then we'll go over there. You know, and I was like. <laughs> playing like drum donna was playing drums on um pots and pans <laughs> yeah. and like i remember there was we had the bass guitar there and we were just like playing all the songs yeah. and like it was just hilarious yeah it was fun it was definitely one of my funnest earlier cure memories and we watched like he somehow had like a a bootleg i still gotta line the dates up on that where he had this uh like european mtv or something but it was a live show from them and rio where we watch it was like this super long like it was the whole thing you know like was on these vhs tapes that i later got and copied from him but it was like it, it must have been like early in the tour for that or you know they did some some you know scattered all over the world dates before doing the u.s i guess for that tour so they had some like wild mood swing stuff and we were just watching the whole <laughs> like bootleg before going into the trenches and <laughs> I was just being like god knows how many rolling rocks in or whatever you know <laughs> but, like, but, uh, but then the irony too was we got there and we waited we had these great spots in line and then like they're like we're gonna do a lottery system where everybody just gets like a number and it didn't matter anyway <laughs> so we, we totally could have showed up there like five minutes before it opened and like we would have had and we still got the same tickets we would have got if we had just called <laughs> but it's like oh well so lame. Yeah. Those jerks. that's where they started ruining it yeah <laughs> just like everything <laughs> it's like this is my big moment to sleep on a sidewalk you know it's like come on <laughs> 
all worth the it. Olden yeah. The olden days. The olden days of buying tickets. <laughs> <That's what I'm laughs> but yeah, those are all all definitely cool memories and stuff. And it's just funny where I was just like, yeah, Jessica was at all those shows too. Those early stretches there. But had had you seen them much since then, or since like that last? No. Yeah. I, was wondering I if you... you know when they played in London when they were gonna do that the Hyde Park show. You yeah. know, like. Anne was like, we should go. And it was like, there's no way I can go. Yeah. <laughs> and I wish that I could go. Because <laughs> London is so far away from me. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like more of a pain in the butt for somebody out west to get there. Yeah. But gosh, I, I do wish, though, that I could have. I feel like there was one time, and I do regret it. Was it where they were playing it? Red Rocks? Yeah, they gonna probably. Yeah, I, they... I'm so pissed that I didn't. I, I'm a total moron. Nah, for not it's it's hard like, to seriously. keep track, too. And they, yeah, they did a mega, their last mega tour was 2016, where they pretty much hit everywhere throughout the U.S. Um, so, I mean, it's just odd because the last album, you know, all that drama, it's been like 13 years now since the last album, but they kind of just embraced the, <laughs> well, you know, it's going to be like 90% what people want to hear is the old stuff anyway, you know, so they'll throw right. sprinkle in some of those later albums. But for the most part, you know, they kind of have embraced that, which I think a lot of people are totally fine with, you know, three hours worth of <laughs> cure shit. It's like, and then they're always still going to play something you didn't here you know like oh they didn't play that song it's like they played for three hours dude <laughs> <laughs> thank you for saying that gab because like that's the one thing that i you know i don't know i talk about a lot i like i sound like a broken record but like when the cure puts on a show they put on a fucking show yeah. you know what i mean like three i gonna never forget when we went and saw new order at Meriwether and it was like an hour, <laughs> yeah. you know, and I was like, screw you. Like I remember the leading. Totally, that show yeah. Like, it was like you guys are jerk off. I almost feel like it was like barely night even when they wrapped up. It was like it's not even like yes! dark still. <laughs> what the hell was that? Uh, yeah, so, New Order. So I feel like they've they've actually got better over the years, but they're yeah. As much as I love them, they're pretty brutal live, where they're just like not feeling it. Doesn't sound that great because some of the computer shit just isn't really translating. And then it's just <laughs> he's just like doing his whoo whoo all over everything. You know, I'm just like what the hell? Yeah, that's like barely an hour long. <laughs> it's, like, it's like I know you have plenty of good songs. You can play a little. No more. kidding. Uh, like exactly. So like you know the cure they're they're artists in that way you know yeah. like their live shows are like just so profound from that perspective of like really giving it to the audience yeah. you know they freaking give their heart and soul to it and it's awesome yeah i think that's a huge part of why you know he doesn't just retire or whatever you know and they sound so good still that's like the catch too is like people that haven't really been following them and stuff are kind of, it's easy to assume. I mean, he's like 60 something. They haven't put out a new album in forever. Right. You're kind of like, yeah, it's going to be cool, but it's probably not going to be that great, you know, but it's like, arguably he sings better now. I don't know what the hell he's doing with his voice over the years or the fact that he's just not totally annihilated maybe when he's singing now, <laughs> you know, but he could like, I mean, he hits everything in the perfect Robert way. I mean, his voice just sounds so good. I mean, arguably some of the songs, you know, or a little more autopilot at this point in phase, you know, where they're just kind of playing it and you could tell they've just done it a billion times. So the, the crazy f looseness might not be there as much, but, um, but I mean, that's, it's crazy how flawless they are. It's almost to the point where you want them to mess up a little bit, you know, or <laughs> you just like, like, <laughs> prove that they're human or something. It was like, what is happening up there? But uh, so I think that's why it gets tough when stuff like COVID hits. You know, I'm sure there's a lot of other problems with COVID, but it's stopping the cure from touring. <laughs> Start, you tell it, Gavin. <laughs> Screw you, COVID. Yeah, what the hell, <laughs> but, um, so yeah, it, it is pretty amazing, but, uh, Definitely recommend if they do make it, if, if they still are a band, even <laughs> by the end of this, I know, right? <laughs> who knows what's going on. But uh, if they do, I recommend checking them out. Um, you know, they definitely still got it by all means. Uh, yeah. wow. You get so much like Dark Cure versus Pop Cure, you know, ultimately most people love it all. But do you lean one way or the other? As I don't want to sound so cliche, funky. but I, I will say that probably Disintegration is my favorite album. And I'll yeah, just I'll just do it the too. South Park way. Disintegration is the greatest album ever. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, 
like like most things when it's declared on South Park, I think it's the official answer. So we're, I, but we're you're right. Sitting. There's so much that I love. And I mean, even now, like when I'm exploring like other older songs, like I was listening to Exploding Boy the other day and like I love screaming that song in the car. You know what I mean? While I'm driving and yeah. gosh, there's so many great. I don't know. You know, I you can't. Ugh, it's just hard to pinpoint. Yeah. Yeah. So if you do see him again live someday, is there a uh, ultimate song that you would like him to have in the set list? Whether it be a, well, here's a two part question then, I guess, cause it's like obviously a safe pick song you would love to hear live one more time. And one that's pretty much no chance in hell they would really do it, but you would love to wish for it. <laughs> I guess I have to say that I, oh man, it's so hard. Yeah. Like what, like if it like, I, <sighs> I mean, it's such a short, like, like song, but like, I love it so much. Like to hear like plain song, um, yeah. a forest is, is one of my favorite awesome. songs ever. And just the whole orchestration of that song and being able to, oh, hear it, um, live, you know, like the, and, and the way they play live songs, there are certain ones that are probably better live than like you know i would hear like on my own mixed tape yeah. ha, ha, ha. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but what you know i think something else like you know a song that we may never hear again um unfortunately but it's but the song killing an era yeah. you know what i mean like <laughs> Like you can't even listen to that on Spotify now. Yeah, it you know? is weird. I, I've been kind of doing half research on that just to see if I could come up with a theory and stuff. But yeah, I think a lot of them don't even have it on there. Um, and I, I think it's because it's a misunderstood song. Yeah, like, it's just not worth they, the hassle to like put yeah, it on there. Yeah, exactly. It's like, and I don't know exactly. whose decision that is. If it, if it's not the Cures, then it's really lame, I think. But at the same time. I could see them just not really wanting to bother with it anymore. They have started to play it again, reclaimed it for that Hyde Park anniversary one, I think, where it was just like, fuck it, we got to play this. And, you know, as their first single and stuff, you got to just get over it, people kind of thing. You know? So that was cool that they did that. But yeah, it's weird. I kind of want to research that because I noticed like even on, I have the Apple one, so I'm not sure on Spotify as much, but like Standing on the Beach isn't even on there as a compilation. Gosh, yeah. Crazy. Yeah, I mean, you find all the pieces everywhere, but I mean, they have all the other compilations, and I almost wondered if it was just because Killing an Arab's on that, you know? It's like, is that stopping them from putting the whole thing on there? That's like ridiculous. Yeah. So. Right. Yeah. I, don't know. It, I mean, it's just one of those things if it's an argument that's been happening or mis being misunderstood since like 1979, it's kind of like, come on, man, they've put so many stickers on everything since the start of all this. It's like, if you haven't caught on at this point, then you're just, you know, clearly not getting it. But, but yeah, that would be a good one. Yeah, it's not a guarantee anymore. Uh, it used to be like in every closing, you know, show. But well, uh, and what about primary? Like that's also like yeah, it's pretty regular, I think. But um, it... yeah, but uh, definitely a good one. They they rocked it out a lot more the last few times I saw them, even which was kind of cool. We're just like kind of took it up a notch, you and I was like, wow old guys somehow are making it like rock more now than it ever did. <laughs> so, uh, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's funny. And they're, they're so good at that too. Like just pulling, you know, that last mega tour in 2016, they dropped a few in that they had never played live. Like they did exploding boy for the first time, like live. Oh, and, yeah. It was just like a couple of those, <laughs> like too late and stuff like that. They dug up or just like, Oh man, those are just like, besides that every cure fan's gonna doesn't even have to sound that great but you just <laughs> for the rarity factor you're just like this is amazing but, um, <laughs> uh, i love your muppet voice <laughs> <laughs> just gotta turn into a muppet at a cure show i guess <laughs> 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 arms get all wobbly and stuff <laughs> uh, <laughs> I guess, do you have any um, thoughts? Uh, let's see. The the love that you had early on as a Cure fan, as a, as a young wee Jessica, do you think <laughs> anything has changed over the years or stayed the same or both? I think um, probably, it def I mean, I think it's evolved. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, for sure. Like, as, as I get older and, I don't know, just like, you know, become... 
uh, when I connect with the world differently, you know, sometimes um, maybe there are some songs that I'm like, oh, you know, like when you were talking about how like you're uh, like, you know, maybe you're listening more to one song now than you did. Yeah. There are definitely phases where you go through where like for me, that's definitely the case. Like just randomly one night I'm going to be like, man, you know, I haven't heard this song in so long. And then I just start going down a rabbit hole of Cure songs, yeah. you know, like <laughs> like on um, online and just playing around. But, you know, also, I think for me, it's funny, but as I've evolved as, I guess, an artist myself, now that I'm, I, you know, I write poetry, but I'm also doing paintings. Right. I want to do a series um, of paintings that, like, each one is, like, for me, wrapped up in a Cure song. Yeah. Does that make sense yeah. in the feelings? Yeah, totally. Because I'm, I'm an abstract painter, and I... Um, you know, and so my paintings really are about emotion and the mind and um, just all the stuff that goes along with that between like clarity and how much crap we have going on in our heads. Yeah. But to yeah. me, like, that's what a lot of like, especially older cure stuff is about, you know, and it was about being honest and authentic about some of maybe the effed up thoughts right. that we might have, you know, especially in relationships or, um, but also about like how much like joy and love you could feel too. And that's the irony about the cure. Like mm -hmm. people want to yeah. give them shit, you know, maybe for making poppy songs, you know, like, but, but some of those poppy songs are like real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have like, Hey, maybe we're like in a happy mood sometimes right. and that comes out differently, you know, but they still do it cool. You know, yeah. they do it in their way. And, and that's, that's, what's important to remember for me, I think about the cure as bands get older. Sometimes people want to be like, Oh, forget their new stuff. Why are they doing that? Blah, 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 blah. But um, they're human beings, too, and they evolve as well. And that's what makes them great and yeah. remembering that. Mm -hmm. And I think how it still affects me today and my own ability to create and produce art. There's this idea about consumption and creating. Right, right Gav? Mm -hmm. like, like we can consume so much, but what are you also creating or making? Yeah, for sure. Out of that consumption. Yeah. And to me... You know, the cure is a gift that way. Like I consume, but they inspire me to create. Yeah. That's what I love about. Them. Yeah, totally. I, I get it. It's like just the idea of even doing this podcast. It's like I keep just listening to these songs and wanting to get more and more out of them. So it's kind of like, you know, I'm not a talker, you know, <laughs> I don't even like talking. So <laughs> the idea that I've made a podcast where all I do is talk, it, it's got to be just because it's about the cure. You know, it's the only <laughs> thing I can ramble about, you know, it's like, so, you know, I think it is a huge part of that where they just inspire you, like you're saying, to like want to create stuff. They make me want to write songs. They make me want to draw, you know, just like it's, it's yeah. so weird. And just with that idea of how many, you know, we've covered that a lot of like how the cure is so good at covering all those emotions and the whole spectrum of it, you know, like, like you're saying, it's okay to be happy and listen to the cure too. You know, it's like, he's, he can't be just miserable the whole time. If Robert Smith doesn't even feel miserable all the time, you can be, <laughs> you can enjoy them while you're happy too. And that's, what's great. You know, and the, and even just the emotional stuff is like, so adaptable we've talked about where it's like you know because the songs are a little more vague and abstract in the lyrics as opposed to yeah. a lot of bands or like a sad country song you have to feel that story that he's feeling pretty much but like you know something like pitches of you in the right day it's like super fun but when you're feeling at the bottom you know it's like the most depressing, it can be really depressing. <laughs> yeah, yeah it could be about a broke up relationship a dead family member <laughs> i mean it could be everything somehow even if the words don't always land 100 percent with your feeling i mean it's just that emotions in there all over the place and that's hard as hell to do as a songwriter and like a lot of it is just the music even it's not even about what he's saying but then he'll put the icing on the cake with the lyric. And I love the idea too, like you're saying, just cause so many people are like, as they get older, they need to stop, just stop. And it's like, it's such a non artist thing to say to somebody yeah. that's like a total artist. It's just like, he's clearly going to do this. He breathes and loves music so much. It's like, Telling him, it's like, well, yeah, he's probably never going to top disintegration. And he would probably even say that, you know, but it's like, 
you can't just like stop your career because you've had this like huge peak, you know, it's, it's like telling somebody to just die after their wedding day or the day their child's born. <laughs> it's like, it's not going to get any better, man. You might as well just die. <laughs> it's, like the, it's like such a <laughs> shitty like, thing what? to say. You know? it's a... <laughs> but it's also like connections are made, right? Like yeah. here you and I are talking and people make connections and like, like I was thinking the other day, my aunt posted about my uncle Russ who passed away years ago. And you were talking about, you know, like somebody who's passed away. Like my uncle Russ was like, he was like this hardened Vietnam veteran. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Who was kind of like, you know, I don't know, moody and he, he was funny. And the one thing that he and I connected with, and he's obviously my uncle, so he's a lot older than me, uh-huh. was like, he liked the cure. Yeah, and like, cool. how, how odd is that? You know, and we would like talk about the cure together and that's how we connected yeah. so like i think there are generations like if even as they continue to play like where people can connect through their their music and what inspires them uh, because yeah. of it which is really great yeah. like you and Hanson, like you did what it was that love cat yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Guys, he's saying like, it for his talent oh, show he's oh my god i loved it and like you're connecting with your son, uh, you know, through that music and making videos with him. Like when, like when he used to make stop action, like, <laughs> for, do you remember that yeah. one? Like the army guys. <laughs> Just <laughs> dancing to cure songs and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like I'll never forget that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like even, you know, here, like I am forever bonded with so many people because of cure moments yeah. and just like, I don't know. It's like, I I love the movie Almost Famous for that reason. Mm -hmm. Like, I just, I think that that, you know, Cameron Crowe gets music, you know, and he understands how it's this conductor of like connections between human beings and how it changes us and, and makes us like, I mean, I think a lot of times like better. Yeah. Cooler people. Totally. (laughs) Yeah. And just this. those gaps in relationships, like you said, whether it be even older, just people, your peers or whatever. But like, yeah, I mean, I think that's really what puts bands like the cure and stuff into that, you know, stratosphere of awesome is because even when you go to the later shows now, you just see people, you know, with their kids, you see, you know, the people that were there from the start, you know, it's just like, Oh man, this is so cool. Cause it really is spanning generations now at this point. I mean, Henson's eight, you know, going on nine, but in December, but he's like, counting down the days till I can take him to like a pavilion show and just see the cure. He's like, I will stay up for that. I will watch all three hours. (laughs) And there's a certain element of, I just played it around him so much, you know, but at the same time, he's not that into star Wars and he's not that into other things that I was clearly pushing (laughs) at an early age, you know, it's just like, but to cure, I mean, half the time he's like, put the cure on, put the cure on. I'm even kind of like, Oh God, I just like talked about him for like two hours last night. I'm just like, it's like, even I want to listen to something different. But he's like, no, nah, put on the care. And it's like, and I'm like, well, I can't argue that. But yeah, so I mean, it's it's pretty magical just seeing like the kids dancing in the aisles and stuff, you know. And, and another point too, like the later music idea of like creating still in his 60s and why everybody still wants to hear this new album, you know. And like so many people we meet on the show too, like they got them in, into them way later. So like the right. 2004 album was like the first thing they heard, you know. Really? And it, yeah, and it's yeah. cool. And and even a lot of them eventually are like, yeah, I got into them in like 2008, but then I backtracked and heard all the, like the really good shit, you know. And now I kind of know that that might not be the best album, but at the same time, right. but it's cool. And if they're still doing that where you're like winning over new fans and stuff, it's like it doesn't take much. I mean, their back catalog's so solid that it's like you know all you really gotta do is throw that line out there you know and people are like you know even like that new churches single have you heard that where he sings with that band yes, churches yes. i was yeah. actually gonna bring that up and ask you what you thought about yeah it. i love it i, I still want to like churches more than i do <laughs> like they get a little too poppy for me but i well i know i'm at a point where i'm really sick of them so i was like so surprised because yeah. I, li- I, I listen to them too much okay, I think at one point cool. in time yeah, and yeah. then i was like really he's doing it with churches and i'm like okay yeah yeah i was a little surprised i was like uh, a lot of co- collaborations don't really have the highest hit you know percentage there yeah they're always like fine i'm just happy to hear him on anything but but, yes, but I'm, me too. I'm really digging that song though it's like super catchy and 
grows on you with each listen to so i'm like all right dude and i mean for how many like young churches fans are out there you know like so many of yeah, them are probably like hearing a legend yeah right? they're like here's this geezer and then they're like like wow this is really good and then of course they're gonna at least check out two albums by the cure at that point if anybody was like a diehard fan of a band and they do a duet with something of course i'm gonna go check out whoever this person is you know that sang on it so that's it's really cool I, and smart i agree and i think you know i know we're talking a lot but one of the things that i want to say is like if you think about also like just each person in the cure and like what amazing artists they were you yeah. know and like like poor old didn't poor old thompson like tour with the who once you know what i mean uh, like zeppelin yeah planting zeppelin, page. Yes, yeah, I'm yeah, sorry. yeah yeah like that's like huge yeah. you know what i mean like come on yeah. like and that's like the crossover like they're just incredible artists yeah everyone also them. talented like, unbelievable totally yeah it's the whole package that's why it's uh you know tough the idea of like whatever could happen in the future i really don't see Robert doing a solo acoustic album or anything at this point, you know, or it's like, right. so you gotta get the whole crew together. So, but uh, I guess we'll, we'll start to wind down here and let you go. Yeah. But I definitely, um, just uh, you know, semi off topic, even just gotta thank you for so many early music experiences and letting me be the the grommet kid hanging out with you and my brother in the backseat Owen's car as we drive around <laughs> to so many shows and like all those as I started even thinking of these I was like well I mean we saw so many bands aside from the oh cure gosh, more totally. I mean it was always like a the eclipse of the rare stars aligning when the cure would actually tour but like you know just all those countless shows and uh thanks for always letting me tag along I guess I never officially got to say that too no so, way yeah so. you were like an integral part of it all uh, like, I laugh like if you think about like how many times we saw like the beef even like totally off topic and hilarious but like the B-52s yeah, like Julian yeah. Hatfield and like remember when we saw Aztec camera in the old oh, 930 yeah. club yeah I mean it goes so far back the old night the classic 930 club we saw it <laughs> We were pros by that point. We had been there so many times. We're like, oh, it's moving. You know, like, oh, it's going to suck <laughs> now. <laughs> so, but, uh, but yeah, that was like a school night. I had a German final the next day and I you knew I was going to fail it. I was going to fail it. I was like, I'd rather just go see Aztec camera, you know. So, <laughs> let's fuck it. And, and sure enough, I failed it. But, uh, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> but uh, that was going to happen either way. So I have the Aztec camera memory now instead. But yeah, I mean, just so many shows, you know, everywhere from 930 Club and Black Cat and all those, just a shout out. Oh, even uh, the, the my one and only rave, you know, you and Owen got into the rave phase hardcore and checked out all those. But like I tagged along for one. One of them got canceled at the last minute. So these are like the real deal warehouse ones and shit. Just to, just to prove your cred. You weren't, this was like before it was all mainstream, whatever. But uh, I went to the one. The only one I went to with you guys was the... Moby and Prodigy and I think Aphex Twin. Oh my twin. god, I was, was just like talking that. about that rave to yeah. Chris Baggett. Oh like. yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's crazy. That was like the one, I mean, it was before anybody had, you know, like mainstream. Moby. They hadn't broke through anything, you know, and I was just like, yeah, I guess I'll go dance around, <laughs> check out these weird ass <laughs> bands and stuff. And I was just like, well, damn, if that was, if I was going to go to one, that's a pretty good one to go to. <laughs> oh my gosh, Gab, I mean, when you think about it, like Moby was like, he was just a one, like one dude with the drums set yeah. electric drums and no hardly anybody really knew his music and like and he and he dedicated his set like in complete silence in a warehouse to god yeah. and it was like <laughs> so crazy and you've got like drugged out prodigy you know yeah, it was like total. crazy high yeah. and like it was just that was a crazy rave it was so much fun yeah though. that was pretty amazing but yeah it's just the fact <laughs> i was just like one that was so cool they let me tag along for that and it was like two like what the hell were my parents doing like what did they <laughs> it's like what bullshit did they feed them or something or my parents were just like whatever go for it by that point you know just like, it's like geez. that is true how did we get away with that i don't know yeah it's uh, pretty cool <laughs> so but uh, before we go too, um, you had mentioned your artwork and, and, and I love it. And I love seeing when you post your art there and the stories behind it and such. Is there a, a place 
people out there can check out your art that you recommend? Yeah, thank you so much, Gab. Yeah. Um, www.jessica, J-E-S-S-I-C-A, mm-hmm. nojek, N-O-J-E-K, dot com. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, I'll definitely put a link to that in this episode, too, so people can check out your artwork and, and get into that thank world yeah. there. And uh can't thank you enough i hopefully um you know i'm trying to save up some money if tours ever resume for the cure in particular uh maybe i'll i'll do the cross country somehow i'll have a kid with me probably (laughs) maybe i'll see you out in new mexico when they play there (laughs) totally and if i ever end up in Asheville selling my art you'll definitely hear from me yeah (laughs) art related or not definitely anytime you get the travel bug you'd love it out here and uh we'll keep you in the bubble of Asheville. you don't have to go anywhere outside i'll I'll show you all the best (laughs) and uh definitely welcome love to show you around so you know just to end it like yeah uh-huh. like truly like you know the connor family you and owen you know like that was like one of the how can i say it it's like one of the like biggest molding experiences in my life you know what i mean like i your family is so important to me and you and owen especially around music and and i don't i don't know if i would be i don't know like obviously i'm a little I'm always a little crazy about music. Right. My brothers, all of us are <laughs> Craig, especially, but like, ah, you know, it's when you watch a movie like high fidelity and you're like, wow, that's us. You know, yeah. I, mean, like, I definitely shared like some of the, like we're talking about these moments with the cure. Like those are some of the greatest experiences, you know, like, like formative years growing up, like of my life. And so I'm yeah. just so grateful. And obviously I have so many memories and, and I'm so grateful to you and Owen for inviting me into that world as well. Oh, no problem. You made it fun. That was a, <laughs> just been being my crazy brother driving around listening to those songs if you were at this <laughs> uh, Owen wanting to kill me <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> there's a reason why you're always there so it was all good we're having so much fun <laughs> so, but, uh, and your mom you know your mom was our greatest champion and yeah. I just I loved her so much and I'm I still th- I have dreams about her sometimes cool. and she's really yeah really an amazing soul as much as I joke that what were they thinking I mean that's kind of it in a nutshell is that they were, she in particular was always so open and cool about experiencing things out there especially if it's music related and stuff and letting us go to concerts when I was like technically in middle school you know <laughs> stuff like that <laughs> so willing to sleep on a sidewalk for cure tickets you know I mean she was totally yeah it wasn't totally oblivious she she knew what was going on but knew how much I loved it too you know and was always very embraced that in my own music or own crazy music play, blasting amps in the basement and shit you know i was just like what were we thinking if that was my kid i'd be like shut the hell up but, uh, and we got that occasionally but not not too much she was always great that way so i'm glad you got to experience that too Oh, yeah. The that's Connor a, basement is like that 70s show basement. Yeah, yeah, I mean that's a whole podcast in itself, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so, it is. It's amazing we all made it out alive. But, <laughs> but, oh, cool. True. Well, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much again. Um okay, thank you enough. And uh all right. we'll catch you soon. And come back anytime you wanna get any cure talk out of your uh, system now that we covered the origin tale. We would love to have you back as a special guest for a specialty topic if you're down that would be good we can, on. I'm we there. can talk the, the merits of the b-sides between you know 87 and 89 or something <laughs> really nerd out but until then we'll talk to you soon all right take care gab bye 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 again a very special thank you to jessica what a pleasure so fun to catch up with you uh, you guys out there be sure to check out jessica's artwork it's really amazing stuff i think you're gonna dig it you can find it at jessica nojek.com so jessica j-e-s-s-i-c-a 
nojek n-o-j-e-k dot com and we'll also put a link to that in our facebook thread for this episode so go on over to our facebook page and be sure to like that so you can follow up and and chime in on any episode and uh, also follow us on the instagram account at the holy hour podcast and of course be sure to subscribe on apple uh, podcasts there or you feel free just drop me an email at gavin connor at gmail dot com anytime and uh yeah we can't leave without a giant big old gigantor shout out to our faithful patreon crew too as well donna matt craig and jeff hilton and jeff Cortland jones and suzanne and john and ben and allison and our newest addition alan we didn't get a chance to welcome him on the last episode it snuck right in at the end so welcome to the family, Alan. It's good to have you on board, and we really appreciate the support, not only from you, but everybody on the Patreon crew there. It really means the world to me, so thank you so much. And um, one of the perks of being part of the Patreon crew is you get to shout out something if, you, if you're feeling it and you want to promote something. And one of those is our buddy Scott Kruger, who's been on the show, and he co-hosts a superb Star Wars-themed podcast that you should definitely check out if you haven't already, called The Sarlacc Digest. And you can find that on YouTube. Every Monday night, they do a live show at 8 p.m. Pacific Time where they hash out the latest news and rumors and line talk, everything Star Wars related. No matter what level Star Wars fan you are, they cover it all in a very fun and engaging format. You can even chime in on their live chat in real time and ask them questions or comment on what they're talking about. It's really cool and a real highlight of my week. It's a great way to wrap up the Monday night here on the East Coast and uh, really just just send it off right before bed with some Star Wars talk to decompress in a galaxy far, far away. But um, also the Sarlacc Digest, the whole crew is going to have a live appearance coming up soon. Um, if you're in the Vegas area at Las Vegas Unicon Convention, October 1st through the 3rd, and that's going to be at Downtown World Market Center. So stop by and meet the fellows from the Sarlacc Digest, along with some, some Star Wars Universe celebrities too. Ashley Eckstein, uh, who does the voice for Ahsoka on Rebels and uh, Clone Wars is going to be there. And Jim Cummings, who does the voice of Hondo, and Daniel Logan, who actually plays little Boba Fett in episode 2 and D. Bradley Baker who does all the voice of the clones and Captain Rex on the animated shows um, Timothy Zahn the author is going to be there so tons of them um, you don't want to miss out if you're in Vegas go check this out you can get tickets at unicon.vegas so uh, go check that out if you're nowhere near there like me just uh, be sure to listen Monday nights on YouTube 8pm Pacific time or they'll be digesting Star Wars topics for thousands of years. Lisa would like to cure fans and beyond to know about Dickens, a pub up in Calgary. Um, it's once again opened and fully armed and operational. And uh, yeah, as of September 2nd, they've, their doors are back open. So if you're up there and in the area, definitely go get yourself a drink, catch a show, do some dancing. Um, but if you're really just enjoying those live streams still, you're still in luck. You can awkwardly dance in the comfort of your own home still on Tuesdays and Wednesdays at 8 Mountain Standard Time and Sundays at 9 Mountain Standard standard time uh just go to dickens yyc on twitch and be a part of the live streams there or go get a drink in person matt recommends that you check out the red cross blood donor app not only can you schedule and find where to donate blood but you can also track your blood once you've given it and see which hospital it goes to so get the app save some lives there's a shortage right now of the pandemic for sure, so uh, go do some good. Get, get an app, save some lives. And last but not least, our dear friend Kate, who hosts CureThreads.com. It's an amazing online store, and she's been running that for a while now. And that's where you can get a wide variety of products that include original Cure-inspired artwork and designs by Kate herself, and recreations of clothing that came straight from Robert Smith's wardrobe there. And uh, check them out for yourself. There's a new uh, Thick as Shit shirt inspired by our dear Simon Gallup. Um, if you remember when he wore that. 
Um, so yeah, go check that one out. And uh, there's a Love Cats pattern roller skate skirt caterpillar flip flops the list goes on and on so you definitely want to go check these out they're beautiful designs and really quality products over there at curethreads.com and uh if you're like me and wear cure t-shirts in 90 percent of your life you're also going to want to check out Chaz's website 17 second shirts.bigcartel.com or just follow him on instagram at 17 underscore seconds to see what the latest cool design he's whipped up for you guys for pre-order and um always cool designs not sure what's going to be up he just wrapped up a batch there so keep your eyes peeled see what's coming up next from Chaz, and also check out his new podcast the x communication station it's my new favorite podcast and i think you'll love it too it talks about growing up um in the church and all that that entails so uh go on over and check it out everywhere that you stream your podcast it's very entertaining and educational but that's about it for now so again super special thank you to jessica thank you to you guys out there for listening and uh thanks to all our patreon crew love you dearly and we'll catch you soon with more wonderful episodes on the horizon so until then i'll just say talk hard